Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about vehicles. Where would we be in life if we didn't have vehicles? Vehicles allow us to travel quickly from one place to another. Vehicles give us freedom. Vehicles allow us to visit people that if we didn't have vehicles, we wouldn't be able to visit very easily. I know for my <laughs> for me, when I visit my mom, it's a 30 minute drive. If I didn't have a vehicle, how long would that take me? Half a day to walk there? Almost a whole day. Anyways, enough about what would life be like without vehicles. Welcome to this English lesson about vehicles. We're gonna get started fairly quickly because I have a lot of slides to talk about. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about vehicles. All of those things with four wheels or sometimes two wheels or three wheels or one wheel. The things we drive around to get places. Well, I'm sure it's not much of a surprise that the first slide is car. Um I'm going to go through all of the very common vocabulary as quickly as possible. All I will say about this is the car is one of the coolest things ever invented. I know we're polluting a little bit when we drive them. I know that um we need to be a little bit more careful about that but the car has certainly helped create the modern world. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have a car especially in a country as big as Canada. So, a car is used for people to get from one place to another. A truck on the other hand is used to get things from one place to another. These are probably the two most common vehicles that I see on the road. A car and a truck or cars and trucks if I want to use the plural. Again, cars have let us bring people everywhere or take people everywhere or drive everywhere. Trucks have let us bring things everywhere. Um and there's other things we use to transport uh things but uh trucks are certainly one of them and uh certainly have helped us to have a modern world. And then there are different kinds of trucks. There's something called a pickup truck. This is very common in Canada. This truck has two purposes. You can use it as your daily driver. That's what we refer to or that's how we refer to the car or truck you drive every day. So, you could just drive it to work or maybe you own a construction company and you have a pickup truck so that you can uh, put wood in the back or your tools and go to the job site to build things. But certainly, one type of truck, a very common type of truck is the pickup truck. So, we have a phrase behind the wheel and it means the same as to drive. So, I could say this. There was an accident yesterday and I'm not sure who was driving. I could also say I don't know who was behind the wheel. If I said to a friend, I was in a car accident yesterday, they could say were you behind the wheel or was someone else driving? So, that part of a car or vehicle is called the steering wheel and a common way to refer to the person who is driving is to say they are the person behind the wheel. You'll see this sometimes in news articles. They'll say there was an accident and the person behind the wheel was charged with careless driving. There's also something called a food truck. I know when I was a construction worker, the food truck would come to the job site every day and sometimes I would buy food but usually I was trying to save my money. But a food truck is a truck that a person can drive somewhere and when they park, they can open up the back and they can sell food from the food truck. A little homage to my French friends over in France, boulangerie. Um but anyways, food truck, a truck you can buy food from. In Canada, now these trucks have a variety of names. Sometimes they're called an 18 wheeler. In Canada, we generally refer to a truck like this as a transport truck. A truck that is used to transport goods or products across the country or from one town to another. So, when you are driving down the road, if you see a truck, the front part is called a tractor and the back part is called a trailer. We usually call it a transport truck. You can also call it a tractor trailer. Like just we just put the two words together. You know, my cousin drives a tractor trailer. 
Um or you could just say it's an 18 wheeler. Probably for me, I say transport truck the most and sometimes I even shorten it. I'll say, whoa, I went f- I was on the highway yesterday. There were a lot of transports on the highway which simply means transport truck. And then this is of course what you know Bob drives. <laughs> I have two vans. We used to call these minivans but now we just call it a van. I think when they first made this type of vehicle, it was there was a a van and then they made a smaller version of it and called it a minivan. So, you still might hear that word. This is the best vehicle to drive if you have a lot of children or if you regularly need to give rides to a lot of people. So, uh, a van is a super handy thing to have and our vans, you can fold the seats down flat in the back. So, it's kind of like a pickup truck then. Like, I can fold all the seats flat and then I can put stuff in the back like wood or plywood or something like that. I used to have an SUV. I used to have a Nissan Pathfinder. An SUV is a sport utility vehicle. They usually have four-wheel drive if you need it. Um my Nissan Pathfinder had four-wheel drive. It was very nice in the winter. By the way, I had two. I had one and then eventually I put over 300,000 kilometers on it. So, I sold it and then I bought a second one. This was before we had lots of children. An SUV is not a great vehicle for a guy with lots of kids. So, eventually I got rid of it. But um SUV uh, is what we we actually say that SUV. Oh, I'm driving an SUV now. Are you still driving your van? No, I bought an SUV and it means sport utility vehicle. Usually, a vehicle that is a little higher off the ground and has four-wheel drive in case you want to drive somewhere um, where the roads aren't as good. Um, You don't get stuck as easily. And then we have something called a crossover. This is kind of an SUV and kind of a car. So, they've taken some of the best qualities of both and made a vehicle that has you know, it's kind of like an SUV in some ways and kind of like a car in other ways. Many people in Canada drive cars like this now. It is a very common car to see on the road. Then of course, there's the types of cars I don't own. You could have a sports car. So, you could buy a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or a McLaren uh, or a Corvette or a Mustang. These are all considered sports cars. They're cars that are designed to go really fast, safely. They're cars that are designed for people who love cars. Um for instance, my uncle has a Mustang. He loves cars. So, when he had enough money, he bought a sports car. He bought a Ford Mustang and he loves it. Um it's a really nice car by the way. But in order to own a sports car, you do have to have enough money to own a sports car. And then of course, if you like going to the racetrack, you could buy a race car. A race car is a car that's designed not to go on the road but to go on a racetrack. So, maybe you like to race cars. You get a thrill from driving fast and competing against other drivers. You would have a special car that you would take to a racetrack on a trailer. You can't drive it to the racetrack. And then at the racetrack, you would race against other people to see who could drive around the track the fastest. So, race car. Um I like watching car racing but I don't think I would ever own a a race car. Not not something I would want to do. Hey, if you get into a small accident, we sometimes refer to it as a fender bender. I did want to put some phrases in here about vehicles as well. So, if you get into a big accident where you you can't drive your car afterwards, we probably wouldn't call that a fender bender. But if you just kind of hit someone and both of your cars have a small amount of damage, we might say, oh, I got into a fender bender and we might even say a minor fender bender. Um so, by the way, a fender is that's the side of the car around the wheel. And to bend means to, you know, if I bend something like this. So, because it rhymes, it's a nice way of talking about a small accident. Oh, 
she got into a fender bender in the parking lot. It's not a lot of damage. We'll just get it uh, get it fixed at the repair shop. A small fender bender. Hey, when I was a kid, I did have a go-kart. I actually bought a lawnmower from my neighbor and converted it into a, a go-kart and drove it around the farm. A go-kart is a small vehicle. Usually, that's driven by older children or young teenagers um before they're able to drive a real car. They might have a little go-kart that they drive around. So, the best way to describe this would be um a really small car that older kids or young teenagers drive um because they like driving. In fact, many people who become race car drivers get their career started driving a go-kart. That's a a small car. Usually, you can race them. Um sometimes, you can go with people and go to a place where you can pay to drive go-karts even as an adult. That's that's a lot of fun. To do a burnout. So, if you spin your tires without moving forward, if you get in a car and you put it in drive, if it's an automatic or you put it in first gear and pop the clutch, the tires if you hit the gas pedal hard will spin and smoke will come off the tires and we call this to do a burnout. Students from my school sometimes like to go and do burnouts on roads where uh police officers don't drive. They for some reason they enjoy doing that. It's not good for your tires by the way but uh if you watch a race, sometimes if you watch a car race, they'll do little burnouts before the race to warm up the tires. And then in Canada and in other countries where there's snow, you might go and do donuts in a parking lot um when it snows. I do this sometimes still. Not a lot. By the way, when you have a front wheel drive vehicle, you have to do the donuts backwards. Um I don't understand the physics totally but if you have a rear wheel drive vehicle, you can do donuts going forward. But if you have a front wheel drive vehicle, you have to go backwards. And basically, it's when you drive in a circle really quickly and uh it's kind of hard to explain but it's it's like a it's like a fun ride, I guess. You your car will drift a little bit um and it's kind of a a unique experience. If you've never done donuts, you should uh at some point safely. Actually, I can't recommend this because it's probably not safe. Someday, You'll see a movie and someone in the movie will do donuts and you'll know what it's like. I don't recommend doing it but I did I admit that I do it? I did I think. A bus. So, there are a lot of different types of buses. A bus is a large vehicle that many people can ride on. Usually, you pay to go on a bus. Sometimes, it's just a bus that takes you from one part of an airport to another but a bus is a gigantic vehicle with a driver that can take you around a city or around an airport or from one city to another. If you are going to school, we would call it a school bus. So, in Canada, school buses look like this. They are gigantic yellow vehicles. We call the person who drives this a bus driver or school bus driver uh and usually um they stop, the lights flash, a little stop sign pops out. Uh and the kids get on the bus and then the bus driver takes them to school. I did mention this a little bit. A city bus is a bus in a city usually owned by the city and you can buy a ticket to go on the bus or you might just use the app for that city or you might have a pass. You might have a bus pass which simply lets you ride the bus as much as you want to but a city bus is usually a big bus that makes multiple stops as it drives around the city in order to um help people get to work or even get to school. You can take a city bus to get to school. If you go on a trip, you might take a coach bus. A coach bus, what's a good word? Is a luxurious bus. It's a really big bus with really comfortable seats and usually you go on a bus like this if you are a tourist or if you are going on a trip somewhere to sight see. So, we see a lot of coach buses. We see a lot of tourist buses in Niagara Falls. It's a very common sight. They're usually filled with people from all of your countries. So, when I go to Niagara Falls, I see 
people from all different countries from around the world and often they're on a coach bus as they visit different sites in Niagara Falls. And we talked a little bit about this. An RV is a recreational vehicle. It's basically a house on wheels. So, you can buy an RV or rent an RV and use it to go camping or you can just use it to go on vacation. I know some people will rent an RV even for something like going to a wedding in a faraway city and then they might drive the RV there and camp along the way and they might just park the RV in their in someone's driveway while they're visiting but normally an RV is something that you own or you rent uh in order to go do a little bit of camping. Very common to see RVs in Canada on the road. In about a month from about May, early May until middle to the middle of fall, there are a lot of RVs on the road in Canada. So, the phrase to stop on a dime means to stop very, very quickly. Don't think I have a dime here. Let me, oh, I do have a dime here. Okay, here we go. Is it? Oh, look at that. It's American. Why do I have an American dime? Maybe Brent lost it when he was at my house. Here's a Canadian. Okay, I'll show you both. Let's see if we can get focus on these. So, we have the American Will it focus on them? Yes. Oh, the American one's upside down. Sorry. Sorry, Americans. Let me try and get that right. Why does it matter? It doesn't matter. Sort of focusing. It sees my face. There we go. Anyways, a dime is a very small coin and we have this little phrase, if a car can stop quickly, we say, oh, it can stop on a dime. This guy is uh wrecking his tires a little bit here but uh if a car Or you can even describe an action you took. You could say, oh, I had to stop on a dime the other day. But usually, we use it to describe a car that can stop quickly. So, there are vehicles that we use that we don't use on the road. A tractor is a vehicle that is used on a farm. Usually, you would hook up farm implements or farm equipment to the back of it. This guy is out tedding. He's actually spreading out the hay so it dries better. But tractors are very, very cool. They're very powerful vehicles. They're designed not to go fast but to pull heavy things or to pull equipment that goes in the ground to work up the soil. So, um and a person operating this would be called a tractor driver. Um um so, tractor, very cool vehicle. I have a couple. Um The big tractor I have though, I don't use as much. I feel like I should sell it. That would be a good idea. A forklift. So, this is something you would find in a factory or in a warehouse or you might find it at a lumber yard. A forklift is a very slow vehicle that is really good at lifting things. Generally, the forks, that's why we call it a forklift. The two things on the front are the forks. Generally, the forks will go under a pile of wood or they might go into a pallet that has a lot of stuff on it. A pallet is a wooden or plastic structure that we stack things on. Um a boat. So, a boat is a little different than a ship. So, in my mind, a boat is a small vehicle that you would use on the water. Uh, a ship is a very large vehicle on the water. It actually sounds funny to me to call them vehicles. Technically, they're vehicles but a boat would be something like this. Maybe you have a boat to go fishing with your friends. Maybe you like water skiing and you have a boat that you can use when you go water skiing. A ship is generally very large. It might be used to transport many people or it might be used to transport a lot of products across the ocean. A ferry is a special kind of ship that moves cars from one place to another. So, you drive your car onto the ferry and it takes you across from one part of a country to the other. I know these are very common in Europe. Um they're common in western Canada. There are ferries in the province of British Columbia and there are a few ferries on the east coast as well. But a large boat that transports both cars and people Um but usually it transports uh cars in our modern world. A sailboat 
is a boat that's powered by the wind. So, you put up your sails, you unfurl your sails and then the wind helps you to get from one place to another. Um I've never been on a sailboat. No, that's not true. I think I've been on a sailboat once. I'm trying to remember. It was a really tiny one though. So, yeah, that was a long time ago. Anyways, probably very cool to be on a sailboat. I do know someone who sold their house and bought a sailboat and they just live on their sailboat now. That sounds sounds pretty cool. I'm sure it has its um pros and cons though. A rowboat is a boat where you use oars in order to get from one place to another. A canoe is similar but a canoe is a little different in the sense that this looks more like an old boat, a traditional boat and you probably row like this. You probably connect the oars to the boat and you row in a traditional way um but a canoe, you row like this, okay? I don't know if I have kayak on here. I should have put kayak on here. A kayak is similar to a canoe but it's for one person. We have a few uh kayaks. They're fun. Anyways, this is a pretty common sight in northern Canada. If you come to Canada and you go camping in the north, you will see canoes everywhere. You will see people carrying canoes to the lakes. You will see canoes on the lakes. Usually, there's one, two or three people in the canoe enjoying their time on the lake. This is something I have never been on and I don't know if I would go on. A cruise ship is a large ship that people use to go on vacation. So, in Canada, it's pretty common to go south in the winter because it's very, very cold and it's a common to go to somewhere warm. It's a it's common to go somewhere warm like Florida and often people will take a cruise. They will go on a cruise ship to visit a whole bunch of different areas down there. Um so, yes, uh I think I would feel crowded. There's there's like 3,000, 4,000, 6,000 people on a cruise ship. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess I should do it once and see if I like it. Maybe someday. We'll see. A motorboat is simply a boat with a motor on the back. It might be an outboard motor like this one or it could be an inboard motor where it's kind of built into the boat um but definitely a little faster than a rowboat or a canoe um and uh generally used for in Canada, motorboats are generally used for fishing or for water skiing or other things uh out on the lake or out on the river but definitely motorboat a boat with a motor. A speedboat is something a little different. Um a speedboat is a motorboat but designed to go really fast. Just like we have cars and sports cars and cars and race cars, we also have boats and speedboats. Speedboats are designed to go really, really fast. Not just for racing. Some people own speedboats because they like going really, really fast when they're on the ocean or on the lake or somewhere else. If you're wealthy, you can buy a yacht. This is a very hard word to say if you don't know how to say it. You can't sound this word out but it's just yacht. You can ignore the C and the H. A yacht is a large luxurious boat designed for very wealthy people. You can probably have parties on yachts. Notice I don't know what you do on yachts. You could probably sleep on your yacht. I'm sure it has bedrooms. I'm sure you could um go from one country to another on your yacht and vacation in beautiful places that I've never been to but anyways, a yacht is a very large boat designed to be it's kind of like an RV but on water. That's the, that's a good way to describe it. And then there's of course uh what we call a submarine. This is a boat that goes underwater. So, a submarine is generally used by navies. It's used by the military and it's a, it's a boat that can go underwater in order to go undetected by other countries or your enemies. An airplane or just a plane. So, this is the generic term for anything with wings that flies, okay? So, a plane usually has two wings. Sometimes you go on a plane because you're going on a trip. Sometimes planes are just used to send things around the world but definitely uh something that flies in the air. It still amazes me that planes can fly. I know we've had planes for a long time 
but it still amazes me that something that big and that heavy can fly. It's just cool. You might also just call it a jet. Um I think most planes, most passenger planes now are jets. The difference is if a plane has a propeller, then it's not a jet. A jet is a type of engine that sucks air in and then shoots high velocity air and exhaust out the back in order to develop propulsion. I don't really know what I'm talking about but a propeller spins like a fan. A jet engine just shoots um I'm I'm gonna say air but it's exhaust and uh, spent fuel and everything else out the back. If you want a science lesson on jets, I'm sure there's someone on YouTube teaching about it. If it is um something used by an air force, we usually call it a fighter jet. If you watch the movie Top Gun, there were a lot of fighter jets in that movie. Um Tom Cruise stars in a movie where um there's definitely a lot of fighter jets. People learn to fly fighter jets and uh Tom Cruise saves the day. Spoiler alert. I guess he saves the day. There's some good music too. A helicopter is a different kind of aircraft. A helicopter develops lift by having a giant for lack of a better word, a giant propeller on top and as it spins, it allows the helicopter to rise. So, a helicopter is different than an airplane in the sense that it can take off and land vertically. An airplane needs a runway in order to take off and an airplane needs a runway to land on. A fairly long runway. A helicopter can simply land wherever it wants and take off from wherever it wants. That's why many hospitals have helicopter landing pads on the roof so that helicopters or what we call air ambulances can land. You have a train. Sometimes you take a train to go to the city. If you're someone like me, I drive as close to the city as possible and then I jump on a train. I like to go by train because it's cheap and then I don't have to worry about parking. Um and there are different kinds of trains. I'll talk about that in a sec, I think. Um <coughs> excuse me. So, one of the things that's common about trains is that they go on rails or railroad tracks. This isn't technically a train but a streetcar or a trolley is similar because it goes on tracks as well. Sometimes when you go to the city, there are city buses. Sometimes there are streetcars or trolley cars and it works the same as a bus. You can pay to go on the streetcar and it will take you to a different part of the city. If a train which has lots of train cars or cars behind it, this is another place where we use the word car. If it is primarily used to send things from one place to another, we call it a freight train. So, in Canada, when I stop at a railroad crossing, it's often a freight train going by. Usually, in our area, loaded with cars or car parts um because my part of Canada is about four or five hours away from Detroit. So, southern Ontario and Detroit, Michigan, it's a, there are a lot of cars built here and a lot of car parts built in this area. Basically, from um like there's a place near me, a city where there are just tons of small factories that make car parts and they all get shipped to Detroit. So, anyways, a freight train, it's full of freight or cargo you could say. Passenger train of course has people on it. Um when I go to Toronto, I take a passenger train. It's actually called the go train. So, I buy a go train ticket and I take the train to Toronto. I don't like to go by car because it's hard to find parking. If you go to Toronto to go shopping or to see a game, it's hard to find parking. Um passenger trains are common in our large cities but I think I mentioned this earlier. Um I would love it if we had a high speed train in Canada. We don't have any high speed trains but that would make life more enjoyable as I get older. I could just jump on the high speed train. That would be fun. A rocket is of course a vehicle that goes into space. Um we know that NASA in North America or the European Space Agency or SpaceX, I think it's the European Space Agency. Don't you guys shoot rockets out of South America somewhere? I don't know. One of you Europeans will have to answer that. A rocket is a vehicle that has rocket engines on the bottom and it is used to send people or things into space. 
I will probably never go on a rocket but maybe my great 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 grandchildren will go on a rocket someday to go to the moon. We'll see. A motorcycle is a two wheeled vehicle. I had a motorcycle when I was younger. I had a Yamaha 400 Maxim. It was red. I still miss it but it was kind of dangerous. Motorcycles are um not the safest vehicles to drive. There's no airbag on a motorcycle but again, a motorcycle is a two wheeled vehicle. Um when you ride on a motorcycle, you're out in the open um and you do need to wear a helmet in Canada if you ride a motorcycle. So this <laughs> so there's two ways to say this. You can pop a wheelie or you can do a wheelie. So, a wheelie is when you are on a two wheeled vehicle like a bicycle or motorcycle and you bring the front tire up into the air. So, you pop a wheelie or you do a wheelie and some people can drive with their front tire up in the air. When I was a kid, I could do this for a little bit for a little while with my bike. I could do a wheelie, pop a wheelie and pedal a little bit with my front wheel in the air. A scooter is a very very small motorcycle. I don't really wanna call it a motorcycle because it's not but a scooter is something that doesn't go very fast and it's very handy for getting around in a city. You do not see a lot of scooters in Canada. They're not very common. I know they're very common in some European countries and I know when I lived in Michigan, you could get you could drive a scooter when you were 14. Like before you got your license, you could drive a scooter. So, they were somewhat popular for I think 14 year olds in in Michigan. So, a quad or an ATV or a four wheeler is similar to a dirt bike. They're both designed for going off road. It's designed for driving through the woods or forest or in a field. Um ATV stands for all terrain vehicle Um, but quad because it has four tires is a common name. Do you have a quad? Yeah, I bought a quad the other day. Um you can see these guys are out driving their four wheelers. They're out driving their cars or quads. They're driving their ATVs. I don't know why I said car there. That was a mistake. Delete that part. Quad, ATV, four wheeler. I do not have a quad but it would be handy on the farm to have a quad. Um maybe someday we'll get it. We'll get one. And then a dirt bike is a motorcycle that's designed to go off road. A dirt bike is used to drive in the dirt on trails. Um you get really muddy when you drive a dirt bike. When I was a kid, some of my friends had dirt bikes. I did not. I wanted one but my parents wouldn't let me buy one. It's sad. That's too bad. A bicycle is of course a vehicle with pedals where you use your own energy and power to get from one place to another. So, um on the farm, we have lots of bikes by the way Uh, and we we usually say bike. We don't often say bicycle. How did you get to work? Oh, I rode my bicycle. That's correct but people would say, oh, I rode my bike, okay? Uh, How did you get to work? I rode my bike to work. I'm going to ride my bike home later tonight. Um bikes are really popular in Canada for exercise. They're not really popular as a mode of transportation. So, people at least in my area, not very many people bike to work but a lot of people will bike on the weekends for exercise. We see a lot of bikes go by on the weekends. Uh training wheels. So, if you are a kid, what what am I doing here? If you are a kid, uh let me start again. Training wheels. If you are a kid and you are learning to ride a bike, you might have training wheels on your bike. This is so that your bike doesn't fall over. So, you can lean a little bit and the bike doesn't fall over and then as you practice with our kids at least, you ra- you raise the training wheels up a little bit every couple of weeks so that you can lean a bit more and then eventually you know how to ride a bike. A unicycle is I guess I, I was gonna say it's a bike with one wheel but it's not a bike because the word the B is actually means two tire like bicycle means two tire. Tricycle has three tires by the way. So, unicycle. So, it's a type of cycle that you can ride. I think I I think I can ride a unicycle still. I think I learned I had a a friend that had one but I think if I tried now, I would probably fall off. 
Okay, I'm gonna do the last ones really quickly so we can finish this off and then uh, I can get to work on time. A hot air balloon uh, is something you can ride in. You can go on a hot air balloon ride and uh, you can go up in the air peacefully. There's no motor or engine. It's just a balloon filled with hot air. Hot air rises. There is like a um a thing that you pull and it makes a flame to heat up the air. I have not been on a hot air balloon ride but a friend of Jen who has a flower farm like us far uh, a little ways from us. A hot air balloon kind of landed in their flower field once by accident. An ambulance is a vehicle that you ride in if you need to get to the hospital quickly. If you are in a car accident, an ambulance and you're hurt, an ambulance will come and pick you up and take you to the hospital um quickly and the people who drive the ambulance and the people in the back are trained to give you medical care. So, it's like a a mini hospital on wheels to get you to the hospital. A backhoe is a type of vehicle used to dig a hole. Uh it usually has a loader on the front and a bucket on the back so it can dig. It has a nice arm with hydraulics that let you dig holes. A dump truck is a type of truck that you can use to transport dirt or gravel or stone. It's a very large strong vehicle um that's designed to carry lots of material. So, here you'll often see dump trucks filled with dirt or stone or gravel going by. A tow truck is a vehicle used to tow other vehicles. When your vehicle breaks down, you can call a tow truck. If you have roadside assistance like me, it doesn't cost anything. Um but if you don't, you would have to pay the tow truck operator to come and uh, pick up your vehicle. A taxi is a vehicle that you can um get a ride in and you pay the driver. So, if you're in a city, you can call a taxi and the taxi will come and pick you up. I don't think I have Uber on this lesson. That word has just entered um our vocabulary in the last few years. You could call an Uber which is similar to a taxi but it's someone driving their own car giving rides for money um but you could call a taxi. If you were in New York City, you could call a taxi and take a taxi somewhere and then pay the driver if you don't have your own car. Um if you live in Canada, you might have a chance to ride a snowmobile or drive a snowmobile or skidoo. I have driven a snowmobile many times. I do not own one but there are so many people with snowmobiles around here. It's pretty easy uh to go for a snowmobile ride. That would mean you're on the back or to drive a snowmobile. Lots of fun. And then if it's summer, you just go on a sea doo or jet ski. Very similar experience. A snowmobile and a sea doo, uh, it's very similar. It's what would we call these? These are like uh recreational vehicles as well but not like a camper. It's a vehicle for doing recreational things. So, it's winter. Go up north, rent a snowmobile, drive around on the snowmobile trails. Lots of fun. Uh it's summer. Go to the lake. Maybe you have a sea doo or jet ski or you can rent one. Do that. Drive around. Have some fun. And then fire engine or fire truck. So, we have these if there's a fire or even if there's a car accident. So, in many countries, the fire department has more jobs than just putting out fires. In Canada, if you're in a car accident, the fire engine will come and the firefighters will help get injured people out of their vehicles. So, usually in Canada, if there's a fire, the police and the firefighters show up. If you call 911, that's our number. If you have a car accident, the police and the firefighters show up to help you. And then of course, garbage trucks. Garbage trucks are trucks that are used to pick up garbage. Our garbage day is Thursdays. So, yesterday morning, the garbage truck came. Even where I live, way out in the country, the garbage truck comes and picks up our garbage, our recycling and our compost. Uh, We say garbage in my part of Canada. Maybe you say trash where you are.